Imagine stepping into the world of glamour where every product used carries the essence of a style icon. Priscilla Presley, a definition of grace and beauty, had her own set of tried and true beauty must-haves. It contributed to her ageless allure. Join me as I unveil the makeup and skincare essentials worn by this icon. Get ready to find out Priscilla's signature look and discover the key to capturing the essence of a legend. Welcome to my channel, beauty enthusiasts. Known for her elegant grace and stunning looks, Priscilla has always been an inspiration in the realm of beauty. In this video, I am unlocking the treasure trove of her favorite makeup and skincare products, allowing you to embrace the allure and sophistication that define this legendary beauty. Priscilla Presley, originally known as Priscilla Ann Wagner, was born on May 24th, 1945 in Brooklyn, New York. Her father, James Wagner, was a U.S. Navy pilot who tragically lost his life in a plane crash when Priscilla was just a few months old. Following her father's passing, her mother, Anne, went on to marry Paul Beaulieu, who was an Air Force officer in 1948. During her formative years, her family relocated multiple times, and when she was a teenager, they were stationed in Germany. It was during this time in 1959, when Priscilla was 14 years old, that she crossed paths with Elvis Presley. Elvis, who was 24 years old at the time, was serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. Their relationship blossomed into a romance, ultimately leading Priscilla to make the decision to join Elvis in the United States. Eight years after their initial meeting, Priscilla and Elvis tied the knot in Las Vegas. The birth of their daughter, Lisa Marie, followed in the subsequent year, in 1968. Although their marriage eventually came to an end, culminating in a divorce in 1973, Elvis and Priscilla maintained a friendly relationship and continued to co-parent Lisa Marie until Elvis's passing in 1977. A couple years later, Priscilla assumed the role of managing Elvis's estate, which encompassed Graceland. She demonstrated her aptitude as a skilled entrepreneur, transforming Elvis Presley's enterprises into a lucrative business. Graceland opened its doors to the public in 1982, and by the late 1980s, the company had diversified its interests to include shopping centers and the Elvis Presley Automobile Museum. It is true that Elvis Presley first met Priscilla when she was only 14 years old in 1959. However, it's important to provide some context and clarification about their relationship. Elvis Presley and Priscilla's relationship began when Elvis was serving in the U.S. Army in Germany. Priscilla was living with her family in Germany at the time due to her stepfather's military assignment. They met in West Baden, Germany, and Elvis was immediately attracted to her. They began dating, and their relationship continued after Elvis returned to the United States. Elvis and Priscilla eventually got married on May 1, 1967 in Las Vegas. While there is an age difference between them, it's essential to know that their relationship did not begin with Priscilla when she was 14. It began when she was closer to 16 or 17. Elvis was indeed a significant influence on Priscilla's life during their marriage, and she did adopt some of his preferences and lifestyle choices. As for their divorce, it did occur in 1973 after nearly six years of marriage. Their marriage faced various challenges, including Elvis's demanding career, constant touring, and his ongoing relationship with his fans. Priscilla's desire for independence and her pursuit of her interests and career aspirations also contributed to their separation. While Elvis Presley and Priscilla did have a notable age difference, it's important to present the details accurately to understand the dynamics of their relationship. Their marriage faced challenges beyond just the age gap, and their divorce was the result of a combination of factors. And nevertheless, Priscilla retains warm and nostalgic feelings for her iconic former spouse. In 1985, she penned a memoir titled Elvis and Me, recounting their romance and marital journey. 
This memoir serves as the inspiration for the upcoming Sofia Coppola film, Priscilla, which I'm super excited about. I believe it comes out at the end of October, maybe November. And I love her movies. Marie Antoine is one of my favorite movies. So I have high hopes for this one. And let me know in the comments below if you're excited about this movie. Half a year into his service in the US Army, Elvis was based in West Germany during the autumn of 1958. And he remained stationed there until 1959 when Priscilla arrived in the country due to her stepfather Paul being transferred by the Air Force. One day, while she was out with her younger brother, a fellow service member approached Priscilla and invited her to join him as his wife in meeting Elvis. After Paul confirmed with the man's commanding officer, he granted his approval for the visit. In November 1959, during an evening visit to Elvis Presley's temporary residence, Priscilla wore a navy and white sailor dress. Despite confessing that she was only in the ninth grade, she quickly became the center of Elvis' attention. He showcased his musical talent by playing several songs, including Are You Lonesome Tonight, in an effort to make a lasting impression. However, as she departed that night, Priscilla did not anticipate that such an evening would occur again in the future. Elvis noticed a resemblance between Priscilla and his recently departed mother, Gladys, whose death had deeply affected the singer. Additionally, he confided in his friend Rex Mansfield, sharing his desire to have control over Priscilla's upbringing, saying, she's young enough that I can mold her the way I want. Elvis was eager for Priscilla to visit again, and during their second encounter, he invited her to his room, where they shared their first kiss. After Priscilla had been on four dates with Elvis, her parents insisted on a face-to-face -face meeting. During this meeting, Paul, Priscilla's stepfather, questioned why a famous star was showing interest in his teenage daughter. Elvis replied, Well, sir, I happen to be very fond of her. She's much more mature than her age suggests, and I genuinely enjoy her company. Priscilla's parents appeared to be charmed by Elvis's response, ultimately granting permission for Priscilla to continue seeing him. Priscilla had already made her mind up anyway. She would have run away if her parents disapproved. I basically threatened them and told them if you don't let me go, I'll find my way, said Priscilla. For the remainder of Elvis' stay in Germany, he was the center of her world. She continued to go to school but fell behind, though she didn't take the pills Elvis offered her when he noticed her fatigue. He said, I want you to take these. They'll help you stay awake during the day, he told her. Priscilla's age meant that they couldn't go out in public, but they still saw each other often. The only thing that they didn't do was consummate their relationship. As his time in the army came to a close, Priscilla wanted to do so, but Elvis told her, Someday we will, Priscilla, but not now. You're just too young. In March of 1960, Elvis completed his military service in Germany and returned home. Priscilla continued to correspond with him by sending letters using pink envelopes to ensure they stood out amidst Elvis's fan mail. Despite her parents' warnings that the king of rock and roll might forget about her and that their relationship was likely over, Elvis surprised her by giving her a call. Then in 1962, he extended an invitation for her to visit him in LA and actively worked to persuade her parents to allow their teenage daughter to make the trip. After Priscilla arrived, Elvis extended their trip to include a visit to Las Vegas. During their stay in Las Vegas, Priscilla began taking amphetamines and sleeping pills to keep up with Elvis's late night schedule. She also started wearing new, more mature clothing that Elvis had bought her. Furthermore, Elvis made changes to Priscilla's hairstyle and makeup to align them with his preferences, telling her, I prefer the look of heavier makeup. Priscilla also had the opportunity to visit Graceland for Christmas during that year. Following this, Elvis proposed that she complete her high school education in Memphis, Tennessee, a proposition she eagerly desired. Initially, her parents were reluctant to agree, but Priscilla persisted in pushing the idea. Elvis sought to reassure them by suggesting that their daughter would be under the care of his father, Vernon, and stepmother, Dee. He also hinted at his desire to marry Priscilla. Priscilla's parents decided to send their daughter to Immaculate Conception High School in Memphis. 
She initially resided with Vernon and Dee, but she quickly moved into Graceland. She took the pills Elvis gave her before she graduated in May 1963, allowing her to attend classes during the day and be available to him at other times. Their relationship was sexless because Elvis respected Priscilla's perceived innocence, yet Elvis had relationships with a variety of women during their time together, from Hollywood co-stars to Girl Next Door types. They were close in other prospects though, using Polaroids to record sexual games, such as like a teacher seducing a student was one of Elvis's favorite pastimes. And it does seem weird, like if he could get anyone and was always dating other women, like why was he so obsessed with someone so much younger than him and obsessed with grooming her? It is kind of an interesting dynamic. Elvis continued to transform Priscilla, who later described herself as Elvis's living doll to be shaped according to his preferences. He had porcelain dental caps placed on her teeth and insisted that she work on improving her posture. Furthermore, he sought to mold her in his own likeness. Her hair was dyed black to match his, styled in an updo reminiscent of his pompadour, and her clothing had to be coordinated in colors similar to his. So it does seem like he was using her innocence in a way to kind of control her. Reflecting on that period, Priscilla said, it was a different era. I was immersed in this world. I wanted to make him happy. I wanted to assimilate into his lifestyle. I wanted to enjoy my time with him. I wanted to understand what it was that he admired. Marcella also started to grasp the constant attention she would receive as Elvis's romantic partner. During the same interview, Priscilla recounted an incident at the Beverly Hills Boutique when she overheard bystanders gossiping about her while she was trying on clothes. She remembered hearing a girl saying, Do you know what that is? That's the girl Elvis is dating, and they're going to get married. She's expecting a baby. Even though Priscilla wasn't actually pregnant, she said, I was taken aback thinking, oh my goodness, is that what people are saying about me? Over the course of several years, Priscilla, who often found herself at Graceland while Elvis was away making movies, was sometimes referred to as a live-in Lolita. Elvis's controlling manager, Colonel Tom Parker, became concerned about the potential consequences if they didn't get married. Likely influenced at least in part by Parker's insistence, Elvis proposed to Priscilla in Christmas of 1966. Despite feeling pressured about the entire situation, they eventually tied the knot on May 1st, 1967 in Vegas, and Elvis was 32 years old, and Priscilla was just three weeks shy of her 22nd birthday. And their wedding night marked the first time the couple engaged in sexual intimacy. Priscilla became pregnant right away, leading Elvis to worry about how fatherhood might impact his career. When Priscilla was seven months pregnant, they briefly separated as a trial, although the separation was relatively short-lived. Their daughter Lisa Marie was born on February 1st, 1968, which was nine months after their wedding. Priscilla found out that Elvis was hesitant to engage in intimate relations with her after she had given birth. He explained that he wanted to give her time to recover, but Priscilla later revealed in her writing, he had mentioned before we were married that he had never been able to be intimate with a woman after she had given birth. Just as he had done before their marriage, Elvis continued to be involved with other women. However, Priscilla was no longer willing to passively wait for him to return home. Priscilla had a brief romantic involvement with the owner of a dance school. Despite renewing their vows in Hawaii, she continued to experience the limitations of her marriage. In 1978, she remarked, my life was completely centered around his life and my own problems took a backseat. Still feeling unfulfilled, she entered into an affair with her karate instructor, Mike Stone. In 1972, Priscilla informed Elvis that she intended to leave him. Upon discovering her affair, Elvis even considered hiring a hitman to harm her partner, but was ultimately persuaded against it. Their divorce, which was officially concluded on October 9th, 1973, was conducted in a peaceful manner. Priscilla explained in an interview, I didn't divorce him because I didn't love him. He was the love of my life, but I needed to explore the world. They shared custody of their daughter, Lisa Marie, and maintained a friendly relationship, frequently spending time together. 
Priscilla was devastated when she learned of Elvis' death on August 16, 1977, and she expressed in her memoir that she felt like she wanted to die. And I always like going into the backstory of these different movie stars' biography and just their life story before I really dive into their beauty routine and their beauty products. So now that I've really talked about Priscilla Presley and how her style evolved through Elvis, let's go in and talk about her beauty routine. So the love story of Elvis Presley and Priscilla stands as one of the most legendary romances in the world of rock and roll. Elvis continued to view her as a young girl, even as she embraced the fashionable trend of wearing heavy makeup that was popular during that era. Priscilla didn't consistently sport the bold Cleopatra style makeup that later became her distinctive look in the late 1960s and early 1970s. She embraced this style after completing a course at Patricia Stevens Finishing School and Elvis did mention that he wanted her to wear more of a heavier makeup look so she probably studied at this school to learn how to do it and during a 1973 interview with Ladies Home Journal Priscilla talked about her famous makeup style, its origins and Elvis's perspective on it. And I mean I really like her 1960s early 70s look to be honest and she even says I went a bit over overboard with makeup when I attended Patricia Stevens. During that period, I was really into the Cleopatra style and Cleopatra was a huge movie in the 60s with Elizabeth Taylor, so I can see why that she would be interested in that style. She says, it was enjoyable. I still like experimenting with cosmetics, but not to the extent I did when I was younger. I believe every girl goes through such a phase, she added. Priscilla humorously remarked that when she looks back at old photographs of herself with heavy makeup, she thinks, Oh, how little I knew. She also expressed a wish that Elvis had offered some comments on her striking makeup look. I sometimes look back at photos of me even when I was like 18, 19, or 20, and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like with the overplucked eyebrows. So I, I get that, but I still really like her 1960s look. I do wish Elvis had voiced his opinion, although she says, I presume he must have approved since he never said anything. I mean, I feel like I get mixed stories. Like some people say that Elvis was very like forward with telling her what to wear and how to do her makeup. So it's interesting to kind of hear both sides. And Priscilla said, I think men in show business tend to prefer women wearing makeup because they're accustomed to seeing women at their best. And I think back then people just dressed up more too. Nonetheless, she clarified that she didn't think her extensive makeup altered Elvis's perception of her. She candidly acknowledged, I always remained a young girl in his eyes. I don't know why, but there's something slightly creepy about that. I know like 10 years isn't a huge difference. It is when someone's still a teenager and then they're in their 20s, but as you get older, it's not. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the relationship and the age difference. I'm just kind of curious. Now let's talk about Priscilla Presley's skincare routine. I found a lot of different forums online. It was hard to pinpoint exactly what she uses, but I found an old Facebook post saying that Priscilla wears fresh elixir ancient oil in her morning skincare routine before applying Bobbi Brown's vitamin enriched face based moisturizer. In the evening, Priscilla said that she uses Lancer intensive night treatment to keep her skin hydrated. She also used Lancer's exfoliating polish to smooth her skin twice a week. And now let's talk about Priscilla's makeup secrets. And after experimenting with various products for years, Priscilla ultimately discovered the perfect product for her skin type. Since she has a fair complexion, finding the right shade and texture is crucial for achieving a natural look. Priscilla discovered that a tube of Makeup Forever Full Cover Foundation works wonder for concealing blemishes, discolorations, lip corners, under eye areas, and more. She gently pats it on to blend it. If necessary, she says you can apply your foundation over top. It does look like a heavy concealer, but it's probably good. As for a fantastic solution for chapped lips, Priscilla says that she uses Aquaphor, and this is a really good healing ointment. It's kind of like Vaseline in a way. You can use it on your hands if they're trapped too, or even your cuticles. And she carries a small tube in her purse. And now let's talk about some of her favorite perfumes. Currently, Priscilla is wearing Jo Malone Nectarine Blossom and Honey Cologne. She also loves Tom Ford Musk Pure, Chanel Allure, and Guerlain Shalimar. And she applies them with a light touch. 
and she actually has her own perfume that she came out with that is in combination with Elvis. So there's a legend for her and a legend for him. And the legend for her perfume is inspired by Priscilla Presley's favorite fragrances. And legend for her pays tribute to Priscilla's beloved fragrance, which we learned is Guerlain Shalimar. So this is interesting. So it's a inspiration and inspired by Shalimar, which I do love. Let me know if you tried the legend for her. I really love Shalimar. It's one of my favorites. And Shalimar is a renowned and relatively expensive fragrance, but legend for her comes in in less than half the price. It's a floral scent, the modern twist not reminiscence of an older generation. So maybe it's a more of a modern version of Shalimar. And the floral notes in this fragrance were inspired by the flowers that Elvis often gave to her, which is a sweet touch. It features a distinctive combination of jasmine, musky tuberose, white flowers, and honeysuckle. And back in the late 90s, Priscilla came out with another perfume. And this one is called Roses and More. I don't think can buy this anymore. I've seen like vintage and used versions online, but I don't think they're still making it. Let me know if you ever tried this one. So in the 1990s, she came out with her own perfume and this one came out in 1998 and it's a floral fragrance. I mean, I love roses and it's a feminine scent featured a combination of floral notes with a prominent presence of roses and it's suggested for evening. I got a vintage one, but the scent was off, so I really couldn't capture the true rose. But I just, honestly, roses are my favorite scent. Like, I love the smell of a pure rose. And I recently read that Priscilla has her own signature skincare brand now called Scylla. And this one is an elegantly crafted skincare brand that unites innovative formulation, safe active ingredients, and enhanced ease of use with tangible results. Scylla represents the accumulation of Priscilla's personal beauty journey, which revolves around consistent, healthy practices and her pursuit of user-friendly skincare products that harness the full potential of top-tier active ingredients to deliver impressive outcomes. In alignment with Priscilla's well-documented passion for animal welfare and protection, the new brand proudly adheres to a cruelty-free and vegan ethos. Scylla is a dedicated participant in PETA Beauty with Without Bunnies program. And let me know in the comments below if you've tried her new skincare brand. I'm really curious. The website doesn't really have a lot of photos of her, but if you dig deeper, you can see that she is backing and behind the skincare brand. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below who you want me to cover next. And are you excited for the new Priscilla movie? All right, see you guys again soon. Bye.